gmail.com and if you like this video don't forget to smash the like button and share this video with as many people as you can and if you have not subscribed to my channel yet do it and press the notification bell too so that you will not miss any of my videos so without any delay let's get started and today we are going to do the javascript bomb okay and there will be two parts part one part two this is bomb part one so without any delay let's get started dab okay okay oh sorry okay so today we are gonna do this chapter till pop up alert because timing and cookies we will do in the next part uh, okay so timing and cookies we we'll go we are going to do on the next part we are gonna do window screen location history navigator and pop alert today okay so javascript window the browser object model so the browser object model the window is the browser object model bomb so the browser object model bomb allows javascript to talk to the browsers so basically bomb allows javascript basically like to talk to the browser you can say like it allows the uh, javascript to talk to the browser so the browser object model bomb there are no official standards for the browser object model bomb so there are no like official standards for the bomb okay since modern browsers have implemented almost the same methods and properties for javascript interactivity it is often referred to as methods and properties of the bomb so like since modern browsers have implemented almost the same methods and properties for javascript interactivity it is often referred to as methods and properties of the bomb okay so let's see now what is the window object the window object is supported by all browsers so it is supported by all browsers it represents the browser's window so it represents the browser's window okay so um, like it represents the browser's window all global javascript objects functions and variables automatically become members of the window object so all the global javascript objects functions variables automatically become members of the window object so automatically they become members of the window object global variables are properties of the window object so the global variables that we define are the properties of the window object and the global functions are methods of the window object so the properties of the window object are the global variables and the uh, methods of the global object are global functions okay so we are gonna we are gonna uh, we, there are some uh, like default properties also predefined properties and methods also so we will learn them even the document object of the html dom so even the document object of the html dom is a property of the window object so even the document object is a property of the window object the like the even the document object of the html dom is a property of the window object so basically like everything like basically everything is a part of the window object so like if you do window dot document dot get element by id header it is the same as like document get element by the header okay it's so like you uh, these days we don't uh, like mostly we don't use a window prefix but yeah you can reuse window prefix in front of everything like if you have created a global variable you can uh, use window prefix to access it if you have uh, like um, created a, go a global method uh, sorry function then you can use the window like window prefix to call the met uh, function like if you have created a function my func and like you can call it like directly my func and brackets 
Well, uh, or you can call it by window dot my funk and then brackets. It is the same thing because like basically everything is a part of the window object. Now let's see the window size. Two properties can be used to determine the size of the browser window. So two properties can be used to determine the size of the browser window. What do you mean by browser window? Where everything is executed. Okay where the output is executed both properties return the sizes in pixels so both the properties return the sizes in pixels window dot inner height the inner height of the browser window in pixels so the inner height of the browser window in pixels and window dot inner width the inner width of the browser window in pixels the browser window the browser view viewport is not including two bars and scroll bars. So it does not include uh, scroll bars in the inner width and it does not include these toolbars uh, and uh, like it does not uh, uh, include these toolbars um, in the height. For Internet Explorer 8765, so like these work in a height and in a width work in all modern browsers but for internet explorer 8 7 6 5 you have to use these like you have to use document or get a document element or client height okay so access the height inner height in uh, internet explorer 8 or like or 7 or 6 or 5 uh, and, and like, or if you want to access the width, you can do document or document element client width or document dot body dot client height. So body dot client height and document dot body dot client width. Okay. So like document element brings the uh, like the root, the root of the document and the body brings the body. Okay. A practical JavaScript uh, solution covering all browsers. So this solution will cover all browsers. So like it, it is creating a variable w in that it is doing window dot inner width. Instead of inner width, we could have only written inner width. Okay. So like or so like if this does not work, we will use a uh, document or document element or client width. If this also doesn't work then use document or body dot client width similarly with the height so if you are doing window dot inner height if this does not work you do document or document element client height or document or body client height okay so this will work for all the browsers like browser inner window width is 561 so like basically this is the browser window because here the all the code is being executed it will not bring all all of the browser window it is bringing this browser windows this is the browser window basically where the code is being executed so it is showing width 561 so this width from this point to this point is 561 and height from this point Till this point is 462 okay so this will work for all browsers because it is doing so first I have to show you that you can remove the window prefix we don't need it it is the same thing okay so like uh, like uh, what happens is it checks that if inner width works then it would use inner width if it doesn't work then it will use document or document element client width if that also doesn't work then it would use document or body or client width so i like i don't have internet explorer or i would have showed you that this inner width does not work in it but you know like it does not work um, like inner width does not work in it so like yeah so for internet explorer 8765 you have to use this 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 or this okay the example displays the browser windows height and width not including toolbars and scroll bars so the example displays the browser windows height and width not including the scroll bars and the toolbar uh, 
and now your other window methods so uh, some other methods are window dot open open a new window so window dot open open the new window okay window dot close close the current window window dot move to move the current window and we have window dot resize to that will resize the current window okay so we basically do not know how to use these methods right now so i can't show you how we can use but if you are very keen you could just this everything on the net you just write window dot close in javascript and it would come and this chapter is done we have done the first chapter and now we are on the screen chapter so let's take a 15 seconds break as i always take after one chapter if it is small or big i take a 15 seconds break ah let me rest my mouth let me rest my mouth let me rest it despacito okay let's continue javascript window screen so now we are on the window screen so the window dot screen object contains information about the user screen so the window dot screen object contains the information about the user screen so when using the screen object you can omit the window prefix okay so you can always omit the window prefix so the window dot screen object can be written without the window prefix so as i told you it can be written without the window prefix some properties are screen dot width so the screen's width screen height screen dot height screen dot available width screen dot available height screen dot color depth and screen dot pixel depth so window screen width so let's see the screen dot width property the screen dot width property pro returns the width of the visitor screen in pixel so it returns the width of the uh, visitor screen in pixel so from this point till the end point okay so our screen width is 1440 pixels so 14 1440 pixels is a screen width okay similarly we have screen height so if i give screen dot like screen height so screen height height is and if i give over here height okay. so it matures the height the height is 900 so the tip from here i don't know if it is including this but from here or here till the bottom part okay similarly you have screen dot height so it is showing a screen dot height the screen dot height property returns the height of the visitor screen pixel so from this tip this tip till this tip over here okay like display the height of the screen in pixels so this example will display the height in pixels and my screen height is 900 pixels so it is showing 900 okay window screen available width so now we have seen width and height but let's see what is available width and avail available height the screen not available width property returns the width of the visitor screen in pixels minus interface features like windows taskbar okay so like uh, like in available width there is no taskbars okay like there is no taskbar on the side right that's why 
available width is like 1440 1440 pixel is the available width of a screen so the whole screen is is available okay window screen available height okay so now let's see available height okay so like the screen avail height property returns the height of the visitor screen in pixel minus interface features like windows taskbar so like it is showing us 875 so that means that it omits this in available height so this part is omitted okay because it is like you know like like it is an interface feature like it is a windows taskbar so it omits this in avail height so this must be 15 pixels that why it is um, minusing um no not 15 uh, uh like 25 so this must be 25 pixels so that's why it is minusing 25 pixels from this right display the available height of the screen in pixels so the available height would be 875 pixels so because it is not counting this height that is 25 pixels so now let's see we have seen the available width available height sorry we have seen width height available width and available height let's see color depth and pixel depth okay so the screen dot color depth property returns the number of bits used to display one color. So the screen dot color depth property returns the number of bits bits used to display one color. All modern computers use 24 bit or 32 bit hardware for color in resolution. So all the modern computers use 24 bit or 32 bit hardware uh, hardware for color resolution. 24 bits is like 16 like 2 to the power 24 this is 2 to the power 24 different two colors and 32 bits is uh, 2 to the power 32 different deep colors older computers use 16 bits so like 65536 so like 2 to the power 16 different high colors re resolution very old computers and old cell phones use 8 bits 256 different VGA colors okay so basically whatever the color depth property gives us whatever the color uh, depth property gives us uh, so like uh, over here uh, like it is 24 so color depth it is showing 24 so uh, like 24 bits are used to represent one color so 2 to the power 24 is the number of colors that we can display on our screen so if we check the color depth it is coming 24 okay and if we do 2 to the power color depth it is giving this number because color depth is 24 and 2 to the power 24 is this much so we can display this much colors in our screen okay not more than this the hashtag R R G G B B R G B value used in HTML represent true colors. So like the R R G G B B R G B values used in HTML represent true colors. So these values represent true colors. So like the 24 bit uh, representation of one color. Okay, so like uh, 24 bits represent one color and they are true colors like the rrgbb values used in html represent true colors so they represent true colors and now we have pixel depth so the screen or pixel depth property returns the pixel depth of the screen so i'll just explain you what is pixel depth so like display the pixel depth of the screen in bits so it is displaying screen pixel depth it is showing 24 for modern computers color depth and pixel depth are equal okay so now let me explain you what is pixel depth pixel depth is the um, number of bits used to represent one pixel okay so like over here uh, pixel depth property returns number of bits used to represent one pixel 
so 24 bits are used to represent one pixel so 2 to the power 24 is the number of pixels that can be there on our screen. so like the number of pixels that can be uh, represented on our screen that can be there on our screen okay so 24 if we do 2 2 to the power this okay so like uh, 2 to the power 24 is the number of pixels that can be shown on our screen not shown represented on our screen okay uh, so like uh, um i wanted to show you something uh, what was it I, I i i yeah i wanted to show you this one yeah i wanted to uh, just to explain you pixel depth once again pixel depth uh, property returns you number of bits to rep that rep uh, number of bits represent one color okay 24 bits represent one color in my laptop okay so like uh, it would show us uh, like 2 to the power 24 bits can be represented but we only need we only need 1440 1440 into 900 pixels on our screen okay uh, 2 to the power could be uh, 2 to the power 24 could be represented but uh, we have 1440 into 900 pixels on our screen so this much okay so i read this and this chapter is also done and now we are on the window location chapter let's take a short break let's take a short break a 15 second break ah <laughs> Ooh. Ah, I'm feeling quite a uh, dizzy. Let's continue. So the window dot location object can uh, be used to get the current page address. So it can be used to get the current page address or you can say the URL and to redirect the browser to a new page and it can be used to redirect the browser to a new page so the window dot location object can be written without the window prefix so it can be written without the window prefix some examples are uh, window dot location dot href you can just remove that window dot prefix so location dot href returns the href or you can say the URL of the current page okay location or host name returns the domain name of the web host so it returns the domain name of the web host location or path name returns the path and file name of the current page so it returns the path and file name of the current page location or protocol returns the web protocol used HTTP or HTTPS and location not assigned loads a new document and location not assigned loads a new document so let's see location href so the location not href property returns the URL of the current page so it uh, returns the URL of the current page so right now it is HTTPS www.w3schools.com slash js so yes slash js slash 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 js window location so js underscore window underscore location yes dot asap yes uh, but right now it is 
so it is this like www https https dash dash www dot w three schools dot com gs yes try it dot asa asp try it try it dot asp and then question mark question mark file name file name equal to try gs try gs underscore underscore lock lock underscore underscore href href okay so it uh, uh, it shows uh, the current page url of the current page so now we are on window location host name so the window location host name property returns the name of the internet host of the current page so it gives us the host name so like the host name is www.w3schools.com so it, the result is page host name is www.w3schools.com so the page host name is www.w3schools.com and we can just remove this window prefix same thing the host name is www.w3schools.com now we are on window location path name so the path name so the window location path name property returns the path name of the current page so it returns the path of the current page so it is giving us the path it oh, this it omits this url part and it gives us path so the path is hash, uh, slash yes slash js and then slash js window location slash js window location dot asp so this is the path so the like a uh, window location path name gives us the path so the path right now is js try it asap after the question mark it is a query so it is not including in the path it just js slash, slash try it asap is the part that's why it is showing that only that is only the path name now we are on window location protocol so the window location protocol property returns the web protocol of the page so it returns the web protocol of the page what is the protocol protocol is that it is https or http okay so like a protocol is https so s means secure https means secure and http means not secure okay location port so window location port so window location port property returns the number of internet host port of the current page so it uh, returns the host port of the current page so uh, so display the name of the host the result is port number is so it does it is not showing us um, it's like if the like it is not showing us anything so note if the port number is by default 80 for http and 443 for https most browsers will display zero or nothing so most browsers will display zero or nothing so it is displaying nothing okay so like it is https and maybe the port is default that's why it is showing nothing most browsers show zero or nothing so like it is showing nothing okay most browsers will not display default port numbers 80 for http and 443 for https and now we are on the window location assign method so the window location assign method loads a new document so it loads a new document so like here we have a function in that we are doing location.assign and it is loading the w3schools.com and whenever a button is clicked then it would be called so a new it would like a uh, like it a new document would be loaded when the button is clicked so if i click this button the new, new document is being loaded okay so like the whole w3 schools website is coming in this
okay so it will come in the browser window so if i give like the www.google.com google ah uh, it can't so some websites refuse to connect so google refuse to connect so like if i give like for example if um, i can't give gmail if i give repelit repelit repelit.com ah repelit.com also refuse so some websites refuse some websites do not refuse uh, i wanted to show you more examples but like most of the websites refuse so like w3 w3 schools is not refusing okay so this we can have an example of w3 schools so like it is showing the whole w3 schools website in the browser so here is it it is quite cool yeah quite cool okay and this was the assign method i want to show you one location method myself so like i i have a method like location dot reload so the location dot reload method is that it reloads the current location so this is very handy like i use uh, this in lots of my apps like i have used it in like almost every program of my like yeah every program so like it would reload the current location ah what happened mm. yeah I'll just see. I'm gonna go on developer tools. So like settings, more tools. Sorry, more tools. Developer tools. Okay, it has gone on the developer tools. I'm just shifting this, clearing all the errors. I'll just shift this a bit down here. Okay. Okay, and here yeah, load new document. So it does not reload this type of browser. Okay, so like this is not a proper thing. That's why it does not reload that. Okay, but most of time it, it like I will uh, uh yeah. So if I let's try one thing. If I open a console over here. If I open a console over here, oh, why did I open developer tools? Sorry. Oh, yeah, I had to. Sorry, sorry. And what has happened? And if I do location dot reload, so it is. It has reloaded the location. I'm giving location dot reload. Okay, and I'm then pressing enter. Then see, it is reloading the location. Okay, so I'll do one thing. I'm gonna set an interval. Okay, and in that I'm gonna make a function, anonymous function, and in this what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna do location dot reload reload okay and I'm gonna do this after three thousand milliseconds that is three seconds so now you see after three seconds this would be reloaded so like you see it has been reloaded okay so this is the uh, reload method uh, method that it reloads the current location. So, like, if you want to reset anything in your uh, like game, so for example, you want to reset anything uh, in your game uh, that you make, so you do, just don't have to write reset every property of it. You can just do reload, and automatically all the variables get reset. Okay, 
so this is a very ha handy method and to do the reload uh, reload work with assign just give your give your game's url in the assign and then it would reload the current page only okay now we are on the javascript window history so we are on the javascript window history so let's take a 15 seconds break as we have just completed location ah oh, 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 oh. this is comfy comfy oh. then we just have to do now after this chapter we have to do navigator and then pop up alert and this video has been completed completion Ooh, i'm feeling quite tense oh, 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 oh. yeah yeah so we are now on the javascript window history so the window.history object contains the browser history. So it contains the browser history, the history object. Window.history. So window the window.history object can be written without the window prefix. So as we know, everything can be written without the window prefix. To protect the privacy of the users, there are limitations to how JavaScript can access the object. So to protect the privacy of the users, so for the protection of the privacy of the users, there are there are like uh, limits, there are limitation to how JavaScript can access this object. Some of its main methods are history.back and history.forward. History.back, same as clicking back in browser. So history.back goes on the back page. Like it is the same as clicking the back in browser and history.forward is same as clicking forward in the browser so like this forward it is not like it is coming like we can't press this because it is not forward so like window history back so the history dot back method loads the previous url in the history list so it loads the previous url in the history list this is the same as clicking the back button in the browser so like if we do like function go back and window.history.back and we uh, whenever a button is clicked we press uh, we uh, uh, call go back so like if i press back it is gonna go on location because this was uh, where we went last okay now we are on window.history forward similarly the history.forward method loads the next url in the history list this is the same as clicking the forward button in the browser so we have go forward forward and history dot forward so it will call history dot forward and whenever the forward button is clicked it will call uh, call go forward so if i press forward nothing would happen okay so like if i go on navigator and then i go on the previous chapter okay and then i do forward so it will go on navigator okay okay forward and then this chapter was quite small yeah this was really small like but the history history property is so like so good it looks so good when you like like you, you basically you have created a back and the forward button of the browser so that is quite cool guys so like yeah and now we are on the window navigator. Ah, oh. ah, oh. 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 quite comfy. And just five seconds here. Four, three, two, one, and zero. Woo! Work time! 
Okay, so now we are on JavaScript window navigator. So the window navigator object contains information about the visitor's browser. So the, uh, the navigator contains information about the visitor's browser. For example, app name, the platform or app code name or like this. The window navigator. So the window dot navigator object can be written without the window prefix as you know. Some examples of it are navigator dot app name. So app name, navigator dot app code name and navigator dot platform. Browser cookies. The cookie enable property returns to if cookies are enabled. Otherwise false. So most likely it will return true right now in my browser because I have enabled the cookie. So like navigator or cookie en enabled is true. So it, it is returning true because my cookies are enabled. So the app name property returns the application name of the browser. So this is quite cool. The app name property returns the application name of the browser so it returns the application name of the browser it's like it is showing netscape what navigator dot app name is netscape strange enough netscape is the application name for internet explorer 11 chrome firefox and safari so Chrome, Firefox, Safari and Internet Explorer 11 have set their app name to Netscape and I have Chrome that's why it is showing Netscape. Okay strange enough Netscape is the application name for both Internet Explorer 11, Chrome, Firefox and Safari. So this is quite not a useful property okay because yeah, it is not so useful. So now we are on the browser application code name. So the app code name property returns the application code name of the browser. So it returns the application code name of the browser. So it is Mozilla. Mozilla. Oh, Mozilla is not. So it is. Let's see the notes. So the app code name property returns the code name of the browser. Okay, do not rely on it. Mozilla is the application code name for Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Safari, and Opera. So Mozilla is the application code name for Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Safari, and Opera. And I have Chrome. That's why it is showing Mozilla. Um, it's not a, such a good property. This app application name and application code name these both are like type are rubbish these are like just like properties of name they are not good properties they are not so good so the mozilla is the application code name for both chrome firefox internet explorer safari and opera so the browser engine the product property returns the product name of the browser engine so it returns the product name of the browser engine navigator product is gecko gecko what so do not rely on it most browsers return gecko as product name so most of the browsers return gecko as the product name so do not rely on this most browsers return gecko as name so these three properties application code name application name and browser engine are type of rubbish the like uh, cookie enabled property is very good it is very useful okay to check that if the user has like you can use the uh, like uh, use the cookie enabled property so like if you uh, if the users have uh, enabled the cookie then uh, like you could enable cookies and do whatever you want with cookies if it is false then don't do anything with cookies right 
so cookie enabled is a very good property all three other properties were type or rubbish so the browser version the app version property returns version information about the browser oh this is cool the version information so it is showing 5.0 5.0 macintosh so this is a mac so macintosh intel mac os x11 underscore 2 underscore 1 apple webkit slash 537.36 khtml like gecko chrome 89.0.4389.90 safari 537.36 so personally this is type of i don't know how to use this information i got this information but how should i use it i don't know so for me for some people it is very useful but for me it is type of a rubbish property so the browser agent the user agent property returns the user agent header sent by the browser to the server this is cool so like it is the user agent property it returns the user agent header sent by the browser to the server so like it is sending mozilla slash 5.0 macintosh intel mac os x 11 to 1 um apple webkit 537.36 khtml like gecko chrome 89.0.4389.90 and safari 537.36 quite cool but I yeah this this info is quite useful so warning the information from the navigator object can often be misleading and should not be used to detect browser ver browser versions because like this is quite like the information from the navigator object can often be misleading so it is misleading not often it is misleading and should not be used to detect browser versions so it should not be used to detect browser versions yeah i also think the same it should not be used to detect browser versions because different browsers can use the same name so the different browsers can use the same name like um we saw that they give mozilla as their application code name for like um it's like most uh, like most pro uh, browsers give gecko as the like product name and all so like they can uh, have the same name uh, the navigator data can be changed by the browser's owner so it can be changed by browser's owner okay some browsers misidentify themselves to bypass site test so some browsers also misidentify themselves to bypass site test and browsers cannot report new operating systems released later than the browser and the most important important is like the browsers cannot report new operating systems released later than the browser okay so the browser platform the platform property returns the browser platform the operating system this is quite cool so like is mac intel the app operating system is mac intel because i have i am using a mac the browser language the language property returns the browser's language so it returns the browser's language it is english uh, gb i don't know the full form oh yeah great britain i just remember great britain so english great britain so we are using britain's english language so is the browser online so is the browser online the online property returns to if the browser is online this means that if the internet is working like if the i'm not gonna test it so like if i like for instance if i 
like switch off the internet then it would give us false because online is uh, like there will be no internet so it online will give us false but if uh, we are using a wi-fi then it is true okay is java enabled so the java enabled method returns to if java is enabled so it, it, it returns to if java is enabled java enabled is false so in my browser i have uh, said java enabled to false so i have not enabled java but maybe you have enabled java and then if you have enabled java then it would give us give you true but i have disabled java because i am focusing on javascript not on java so i don't know head or tail about java now in the final chapter of this video so let's have a 15 second break i'm not gonna sing any songs Ah, uh, I will doze off. I'm so tired. I'll just doze off. And I don't want to. So, let's complete this chapter. So, JavaScript pop-up boxes. JavaScript has three kind of pop-up boxes. So, it has three kind of pop-up boxes. Allowed box, confirm box, and a prompt box. Okay? so i want to just tell you one thing i started javascript with all three of these boxes the allowed box confirm box and prompt box and when i first started javascript i was jumping like mad so like when i saw an allowed pop up on my screen or a confirm box or a prompt box so like that at that time i was quite small so i just started uh, javascript coding with alert box confirm box and prompt box so the alert box an alert box is often used if you want to make sure information comes through to the user so an alert box of is often used if you want to make sure information comes through to the user okay um so when an alert box pops up the user will have to click ok to proceed so when a alert box pops up the user will have to click ok to proceed if you if the user does not click ok he can't do any other actions on the screen the so syntax is window.alert some text so you can omit uh, the window prefix the window.alert method can be written without the window prefix like alert i am the alert box if i press try it it would show us I am an alert box. So it is alerting. I am an alert box. Quite cool. Confirm box. So a confirm box is often used if you want the user to verify or accept something. When a confirm box pops up, the user will have to click either OK or cancel to proceed. So the user have to click, user will have to click OK or cancel to proceed. If the user clicks OK, the box returns true. So if the user clicks OK, the box returns true. If the user clicks cancel, the box returns false. So the syntax is window.confirm some text. The window.confirm method can be written without the window prefix. So like if confirm press a button. Okay, so it is confirm press a button. So if I press cancel it would show us you press cancel because it is returning false and so it is going in the l statement and it is setting text to you press uh, press cancel and then over here we are uh, printing the text we are accessing demo and we are setting it in html to text okay if i pressed ok then it would show you pressed ok because it is giving two and it is going in the if statement okay so this is to confirm something yeah like uh, the user has two options okay and cancel okay but in an alert box a user had only one option that is okay so he had to agree what we said to proceed in the app so now we are on prompt box the prompt box a prompt box is often used if you want to you 
want the user to input a value before entering a page so a prompt box is often used if you want the user to input a value before entering a page when a prompt box pops up the user will have to click either ok or cancel to proceed after entering an input value so when a prompt box pops up the user will have to click either ok or cancel to proceed after entering an input value if the user clicks ok the box returns the input value so if the user clicks ok the box will return the input value that the user has given in the input box in it if the user clicks cancel the box returns null if it clicks cancel the box will return null syntax is window.prompt some text default text so uh, window.prompt method can be written without the window prefix so here we have a variable person we are prompting please enter your name and by default it is harry potter so uh, like this parameter can be omitted if person equals to null or person equals to empty string so if, if the person is null or person is empty string then text would be user cancelled the prompt else text equals to hello plus person plus uh, plus how are you today so like here uh, if i try it it is by default uh, harry potter so if i give cyan gupta okay so hello cyan gupta how are you today it is showing hello cyan gupta how are you today but if i press like cancel then user cancel the prompt or if i like give empty string to it then also it would show user cancel the prompt as it is done in the if statement so um, uh, when we can press the cancel button it returns null so it is null so that's why it show uh, it sets text to user cancel the prompt else like if we uh, don't give any value in it then it shows like uh, like it is empty string so it also goes in this but I want to show you one thing if I give a space over here then it would show hello space how are you today so this is a major thing you just need to give a space and it would not show you the cancel the prompt this is a major thing it can be solved easily but I'm not showing right now how to solve it so yeah so line breaks like this property as we saw can be omitted i told you that this property harry potter can be omitted line breaks to display line breaks inside a pop-up box use backslash followed by the character end so if you want to display anything in a new line in an alert box or a prompt box or a confirm box you just have to give a backslash uh, on the screen backslash okay backslash and then the letter n so it leaves a new it goes in a new line hello how are you so it is going in a new line but if we didn't give this then and we just give a space run it try it uh, yeah so it is not going in a new line and like you can't do it if you give a br br leaves a new line in html then also it does not work it shows br in between it so you have to give backslash n okay and for instance you want to print backslash n then how you how are you going to print it you just give a backslash again oh no no so if you want to give backslash n idea No, 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 no. So let's leave it. You, I know how to do it, but it would take a long time. And then we have just completed the chapter. So thank you guys. If you like the video, don't forget to smash the like button and share this video with as many people as you can. And if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, do it. 
and press the notification bell too so that you don't miss any of my videos. Thank you guys. Bye. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And keep watching my videos. Dab and happy holy.